Hello everybody and welcome to this um, No Man's Sky, I guess beginner's guide I like to call it, or just a kind of uh, getting started in No Man's Sky. So um, I wanted to just go through some of the things you need to know in the game because um, I personally love this game. I have close to 100 hours in the game um, since its release a couple of years ago and I've played many different iterations of it as the updates have come out and most recently with the next update which is um, had No Man's Sky back in the news again for definitely more positive reasons um, but I think it has also changed a few things so if you may have jumped into No Man's Sky in the beginning or never have done then hopefully I can just kind of help explain some of the stuff that you might find confusing within the game well you've got a rainstorm coming as well so um, we can actually do this bit, I think, in the ship. So rather than me getting rained on by a super hot rain, let's just kind of explain a little bit about No Man's Sky as we just fly around, I guess. So No Man's Sky is a procedurally generated kind of space exploration game. So what does that mean? Um, procedural generation is a way in which developers are using computer um, simulations to... Um, create worlds which are constantly different so a lot of roguelike games will use kind of procedural generated um, stuff uh, things like um, you may have heard of things like the binding of isaac or stuff like that they use kind of procedurally generated um, layouts of the dungeons so that you don't get bored you can replay the game over and over what no man's sky has done is it's taken that to another level so it's set in a galaxy and within that galaxy there are obviously many 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 planets in there many different systems of planets and all those planets are procedure generated so they are kind of randomized within a set of parameters so you're not going to see square planets probably i haven't come across one you're not going to see triangular planets you're going to see circular planets but they will come in different sizes they will have different climates they will have different wildlife different plants they will have different resources on them um, around there so every time you go to a new system you have the potential to be discovering something which no one else has ever seen before which is one of the exciting things about no man's sky what is also procedurally generated are plants trees flowers um, and this is all within a framework so again um, you may see similar ones on different planets because there are certain plants which are more likely to occur on say an arid planet or on a frozen planet but um, and also the animals are also procedurally generated and one of the great things that people seem to love is um, seeing all the kind of quite hilarious procedurally generated animals which kind of crop up because they all come within a framework so there's there's all these different kind of designs for like legs and torsos and heads and things like that but they're they're using a, a kind of computer uh, formula um, it will uh, come up with these kind of randomized or semi-random I guess animals um, which will appear um, <clears throat> so the thing which I love about No Man's Sky and I think a lot of people love is that sense of discovery and exploration of warping into a new system and you know seeing what these planets are are they going to be a super rare one because there are these planets which are super rare which have these um, very unique characteristics on them are there going to be some nice planets like the one I'm on now which despite its superheated rainstorms is generally quite a nice planet to live on um, or is it going to be a pretty horrible planet um, which is going to um, start to uh, eat away at your hazard protection or potentially even um, you know outright kill you no Man's Sky also has a robust kind of base building system um, it encourages you to discover things using a scanner it encourages um, the the other things which procedure generate are the spaceships so again within certain designs but they are procedurally generated so you can find random ones out there but it's also got a backstory and a 
I don't know if you would call it a single player mode, but certainly because it's not really, but it's a um uh a, a quest line, shall we say. The game itself with the new next update is now multiplayer. We now have this third person view, um, which you can toggle between this and first person by pressing X and going to the utilities. You press there and then you can change the camera view from first person. Uh, and change it back to third person. You can do. You have to do that individually for the ship, and for the person. It's the same, uh, same way to do it on both sides. And we also have multiplayer as well um, on there, which you can choose to join a friend's world, or they can join you. And it adds a kind of new dimension to No Man's Sky, and something which um, one of the reasons why a lot of people were unhappy with the original version, I guess, of No Man's Sky was the fact that they had said there would be multiplayer and there wasn't um, but there is now so um, that's good all the updates for the game are completely free so if you own the game back two years ago when it came out you can get all these updates for free um, you know just reinstall it and it will update to the latest version I'm pretty sure that's probably the same for a PlayStation and Xbox as well as on PC I'm currently playing on PC and um, yeah, it's just a fun game to kind of fly around in. Now, one of the things which will come straight out when you start to play the game is the uh, tutorial kind of section of the game. So the game will kind of guide you through teaching you about um, kind of how the world works and how the systems work. If you've played games before, like for example Minecraft or those kind of games where there's a big kind of, um, you know, gather resources, craft better stuff to allow you to get better resources, to craft better stuff. If you know that kind of loop already, you'll probably grasp it fairly well. If you haven't really played that many games like that before, then it could be very, very daunting. So I'm kind of, what I wanted to try and cover in this video a little bit was to go through a little bit of that away from the tutorial and that might help out because there's a few things it doesn't tell you about in the tutorial that is quite important to know. So. Um, the way it kind of starts when you first play out and the reason why I'm not just playing through it is because it does take quite a long time especially when you don't have a lot of stuff so it's a good sort of hour to hour and a half long to kind of go through and I do have a series on my channel where I do play through it so you can kind of have a look through there but the basic things you kind of need to know are you have your exosuit here you get into this menu on PC by pressing tab you have your starship uh, as well which you will start off with um, You'll be out of range of it though to begin with because one of the tutorial things is to find it and you'll have a multi-tool as well uh, it'll be slightly different to this one um, you won't have a freighter i'll tell you how to get one of those later on for free um, so within your exosuit you will have life support here that's as you can imagine pretty useful it um, uh, uses um, oxygen for you to breathe pretty important you have your jetpack, which we'll go into in a minute, and we have our hazard protection. Now, depending on where you start out, and I've restarted the game a few different times when I was testing out settings, example, and most of the time I started out on a planet which was hazardous. There are different types of hazards a planet can have. One could be radiation poisoning. One could be toxic gas. One could be it's too hot or too cold. Um, trying to think what else there can be uh, I think that might be just about it really um, but on all of those are now covered by your hazard protection never used to be the way you used to have different hazard protections for different hazards which is kind of annoying so I'm glad they've kind of um, done that now what happens when this activates is depending on whether you're playing on normal or survival you have an amount of time before you start to take damage this will protect you it's a shield in other words um, you can refuel this at any time using sodium based substances so you might be thinking well how the hell do I know what sodium is well the easy way for sodium is just look out for the yellow glow um, because the little yellow plants are sodium plants um, when you start out to begin with your multi-tool will only be capable of mining basic things um, therefore you'll need to mine these plants to get your sodium you just go up to press E or whatever button on the console you'll get your sodium you can then replenish I can't because it's full but you would just click on it and then use the sodium to replenish it sodium 
especially if you're going to be exploring hazardous planets and especially if you're playing on survival mode um, because you have uh, um, usually I seem to find this has around about six and a half minutes when it's full if you're in a hazardous area unless you're in an extremely hazardous area in which case it will go faster but in survival mode that will be around about two and a half minutes um, before you need to refill it you can refill it at any point you don't have to wait for it to empty or anything like that um, but obviously you have to have the correct substance to refill it um, another thing which does work is if you just jump back into your ship um, it will start to replenish slowly so it will start to go back up slowly um, which is quite useful or if you find a cave or some other building which you go into then you will be protected from the hazard um, you don't even have to go that far into a cave to actually be protected but um, you know you can even later on using your terrain manipulator tool just dig a hole for yourself and hide in it uh, it reminds me of a game called Astroneer which kind of had the same thing although I think maybe No Man's Sky came out beforehand but anyway um, so yeah that is the sodium so that's quite important especially on survival mode for your hazard protection life support is oxygen as you would imagine so you use oxygen you refill it where do you get oxygen from? Oxygen can be found in, um, let me see if I've got any around here. They're little red plants, basically. So sodium's yellow, oxygen is red. Um, I can't seem to see one. I just actually think I picked one mid uh, game. These are cute little guys as well. These little uh, kind of like land jellyfish. Um, oxygen can be a little bit more s sparse at this guy i don't think i've even scanned it before um we'll go through scanning and stuff like that in a bit but there we go i was just looking for some oxygen first do, 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 do. where are you um well they're little red plants again they give off a red kind of glow that's a sodium plant down there um for you and oxygen is pretty important as well but the thing i would say is that it's uh, more generous than hazard protection if you're on a hazardous planet your hazard protection will probably be more of a priority than your life support um because the life support will go down but not as much the things which affect your life support is moving so you can see there's a little arrow on my life support right now and it goes down as i run the other thing is using your jetpack which is space you can see the three arrows there that uses it quite a lot and running so the shift button that uses it quite a lot running and jetpacking obviously do quite a lot so if you are finding you're low on oxygen don't run don't use your jetpack <laughs> um that's my advice and again if you are low jump back in your ship as well you won't die while you're in your ship um on there i don't think it refuels in your ship but let's just check i am playing on survival mode here so there may be some differences but i have played through a good few hours on normal mode and i didn't notice offhand um so i'm just wondering if it goes back up again doesn't look like it is um so you may just need to find oxygen so one of the other easy ways other than trying to spot these plants around is to use your scanner now in the tutorial your scanner will be broken which is this thing here you will have a scanner you will have a mining beam um and i think that's it but i think you have to make an analysis visor as well so you will need um materials to do that to get materials most things as in object wise you can mine for materials the materials you need to worry about are ferrite dust carbon so this actually gives you both although the material at the top is the main one um uh, ferrite dust carbon um, these blue crystals here are dihydrogen um, you need that for fuel for your ship um, and you just use your mining laser to mine them if you have more than one um, attachment on your multi-tool you can switch between it using g so i have a blaze javelin which is a type of weapon a terrain manipulator a bolt caster which is a gun and a mining beam um, so yeah you just literally hold it down on there and you're away one thing to uh, take into account is sometimes bigger rocks will be a bit slower and there's potential for your um, mining beam to overheat. If you notice that red bar, you don't have to wait for it to go all the way down there. 
Um, so let's, let me show you on another one. Um, so if you look at the bar going up, that's how much heat your weapon is using in the top right. And once it gets to the top, just let go for a second and then re-go and it allows you to go back again. I don't know if, I mean, that's been present in the game since day one. So I don't know if, I presume it's it's meant to be like that. But I know for a good few hours of playing the game, I was uh, waiting for that to go all the way down again before start again. But you don't have to. Now there's a storm. We can see my hazard protection is going down. It's going down real fast. Um, I have 20 seconds left. <laughs> so I need to use some sodium to replenish it and get into my ship again. Again, if I had a base here or a structure or a cave, I could go in there and it would protect me from this storm. Um, different planets will have different weather. Um, some will have, you know, be way more extreme and as a result of which, you know, you can really struggle to actually survive on those planets. The kind of general rule of thumb is that the planets which are harder to survive on have um, the rarer resources. It's not always the case, but generally there's kind of something there that you want because, you know, it's that risk reward kind of thing. Um, taking off in our ship so um, sorry just to kind of not get too ahead of myself to begin with you'll have to repair items on your scanner um, or on your multi tool sorry like your scanner I think your mining beams fine I think the analysis fires as well you have to actually build and it runs through things with you that you have to do if you ever get lost or don't know what to do in PC you press escape and go to log um, this will tell you um, what the current uh, missions you have primary missions here and secondary missions and then select one of those and it will come up and tell you what you need to do uh, you also have your guide here as well which does go through some things with you as well like crafting etc um, new features raw materials it will tell you about them um, yeah it'll tell you where you typically find these materials so for pyrite you'll find it on a desert environment ammonia in a toxic environment, uranium in a radioactive, kind of makes sense I guess. We'll also tell you about the different technologies you get. We'll go through how you get those shortly and a little bit about crafting. Um, so yeah you'll go through that, you'll find your ship, you'll have to repair your ship as well. Um, it's a whole kind of like mini quest line as I said it's there and designed so that you learn a little bit about the basics of the game. Um, but my advice is stuck up on things like ferrite dust and carbon where you can. Um, you can, uh, amazingly, kind of screw yourself over. If your multi-tool uh, does run out of juice, and let me just show you how that works once we land. So your multi-tool needs to be refilled as well. Your mining beam, your terrain manipulator, whatever else there is. The mining beam uses carbon-based items, so phosphorus, carbon, condensed carbon. Um, if you run out of this stuff you can't mine anything so you can't get it again the only way you can get stuff is if you happen to go to a space station you can sometimes buy things there uh, or sometimes you can use your terrain manipulation tool to um, get hold of larger deposits out there so once you get your scanner fixed you'll be able to scan so you press C on PC and it will show you nearby elements. So sodium, Na, um, you've got a deuterium rich plant there that uh, gives you a temporary boost on your jetpack. Dihydrogen crystals, carbon crystals. Um, I don't see any oxygen around, but that will tell you where oxygen is as well. So it kind of gives you a helping hand to go and find something. What's more useful is the analysis, advi um, analysis visor, uh, which you hold down F and it gets you net. This shows you further off uh, things. So in other words, these are copper deposits, um, which are further off um, on there. Uh, some alien artifacts. This also allows you to scan uh, different things as well, which you can earn money for. So we just scan some of those dihydrogen ones, which I needed for a quest. But like trees and things like that, you'll see you just hold it over it, scans it, and you get rewarded with some money. Um, I'll show you a way to make that 
much much better um shortly but we have like little creatures you scan and things like that now one of the things which the game doesn't tell you or i missed it if it does tell you is once you've scanned these things if you go into discoveries you can upload your scans by pressing e you can rename it before you upload it if you want to name it to something he's very cute um and it gives you these things called nanite clusters okay nanite clusters are important because they allow you to buy new technology blueprints um if i go to um a space station we'll fly up a bit we won't because <laughs> i haven't got any uh, launch cluster there we go i've got some uranium so we're fine um if we go up to the space station i'll show you where to kind of get all that stuff because again it doesn't actually tell you that i don't think um we need to go to this space station here um when you take off you just fly around you just fly around normally at this speed on um, pc you hold down shift which gives you a boost there's no fuel requirement for that and when you want to get somewhere really fast so in other words if i just went this speed it would take me th what four hours to get there if i went at this speed it would take me 20 minutes or so but then you hold down space for your hold on you hold hold down space for your um pulse drive there we go and then it will take you straight there within a minute the pulse engine uses a substance called tritium or pyrite to fuel it tritium is the easiest thing to get in the world and it doesn't tell you where you get it from but you just mine asteroids for it so you shoot an asteroid and you will get one of gold silver or tritium most likely tritium um, out of it and then you simply click on it put the tritium in there you go recharged so yeah don't worry about running out of pulse drive uh, fuel you will always be able to get it there we go we'll head back um, launch thruster is for me it's one of the most frustrating parts of the game but I totally understand why they do it so when you get your launch thruster you need to refuel it this can be quite annoying because basically what it means is if you if you don't have the fuel you can't take off um, the only exceptions are when you land in like a space station um, okay we've got a bounty there I'll ignore it it's fine um, the only exceptions are if you're in a space station or a predetermined landing zone i.e. we might not see one but there are these kind of like uh, green hexagon type things and if it well it goes green when you kind of toggle over it and if you press land on that then it doesn't use your fuel so when you take off but otherwise it can be a bit annoying and my advice is get as much uranium as you can because it only takes 40 uranium to refuel um, completely refuel your thruster so we go into space station there's a space station in every single system um, you can see the the marker in the top left there to show it always highlights for you as well so you can find it and they are very very useful um, places to go and for a number of reasons let's have a look why so you land here as i said when you take off from here it doesn't use any launch fuel so you're you're good to go you can kind of land and, and whatever in here i guess because it's like an automated sequence and you can go over to the right and you can go over to the left we're going to go over to the left for now because it holds different things on the left you will see this friendly alien fellow here and we have a new multi-tool there which if you hold down eon you can purchase this one costs 2.5 million so i can't obviously buy it um, but it is much better than the one I've got. More slots basically means it's better because um, you can fit more technology things in there. But we'll decline that one. When you talk to him, this is where you spend your nanites. So we can trade nanite clusters for blueprints here and allow you to buy things. I only have 106, so I can't actually buy anything here. Um, but you can just buy these upgrades. You then have to make them so you can see here it tells you what the required parts are to make them um, on there and sometimes especially on the higher level things it can be quite difficult to get some of the items but it's not impossible you can always have a look at the guide and it will tell you how to get the item basically um, that you need um, the other option he has is is to purchase upgrade modules now these will fit as well in your um, on your multi-tool 
And basically what they allow you to do is upgrade certain things. The one which you should probably go for straight away is the scanner module. So these have random effects, but basically generally what they do is they give you more money when you scan things. It has a random effect, so it, it can differ, but basically you can go from getting, say, 3,000 credits for scanning an animal to 100,000 credits for scanning an animal. And that gives you a lot of money, trust me, that adds up. The reason why I haven't got one now is because I literally only learned about that a few days ago, and I was playing on a alt account uh, with it where I did have that scanner, and it's very very good um, so I recommend getting that kind of component first because money makes money in this game you know essentially the, the, the more money you have the more you can spend on blueprints and better equipment and things to make more money basically um, so yeah that he this guy does stuff for your multi-tool this guy in the middle does stuff for your ship same basic principles you can um, trade in your nanite clusters for ship upgrades um, and this guy does your exosuit, so he will give you stuff like um, what is it? Yeah, like shields, oxygen recycler, rocket boots, hazmat gauntlets, which allow you to to pick up slightly more dangerous things. He also has sometimes has a backpack here, or kind of like a hologram of a backpack that will, if you buy that, and it doesn't cost a lot at the beginning. It's like a thousand units, but if you buy that, it gives you an extra space. So. I think there's one at every space station so you can kind of fill it up but it does get progressively more expensive if you want to customize the way your guy looks you just jump onto this and you can customize exactly however you wish doesn't make a difference in game how you look it's purely cosmetic so if you're a gek it doesn't give you better standing with the gek the gek are a race uh there's the gek the Viking, the Corvax, the Travelers, and you are the Anomaly um, on there. So, yeah, doesn't make a difference how you look. Um, but, yeah, on this side, you have various people. It pays to talk to people. Um, so this guy's a gap. This guy's actually a Traveler. Um, yeah. it pays to talk to people. So generally when you talk to them, you can get some options here. You can offer a gift which will increase your standing. I'll go through why standing is important in a bit. You can request dialogue help. It'll cost you 10 units, which is literally nothing. And you learn a lang you learn a word of their language. Or you can ask for directions. And he will point out a place of interest for you. So let's try that. Okay, so he's detected a trading post for us on a planet. So we could potentially go there and find some interesting stuff. Um, hi, hello. Yeah, they all wave at you. Uh, I have a mission here. When you get to a slightly higher standing, you do higher standings by um, talking to them, learning words, um, helping them out, giving them get nip, which I guess is like a cat nip, um, trading with them. Sometimes they'll ask you for, to do a little mission. Um, you can unlock these, which are this guy just gives you kind of like little missions. Um, I can hand in my mission. There we go. Gives me some units and it will raise my standing a little bit with him. There you go. My standing with the Gek has increased. Um, you browse the missions. If you can't do this straight away, it's because your reputation is not high enough. Um, but yeah, you can just do this stuff and see, so take a photo on an airless world. Some of them are pretty easy. Kill 14 creatures gets you a quantum accelerator. Kill 4 sentinels gives you fi like 51,000 units. It's not too bad. Locate a missing person. Yeah, see there's some interesting things. We'll take unmarked crates. Why not? There we go. Got to deliver some crates apparently. Um, I seem to be stuck. <laughs> That's <laughs> not good. Oh dear. Uh, hang on, leave. Okay, there we go. I don't know what happened there. It was weird. Um, but yeah, anyway, that will tell me where to go. I can, if I need to, I can go into my log and select on March crates. There you go. And go off and do that. We also have the Galactic Trade Terminal here. This is where you can buy and sell things. So if you have a lot of something you want to sell, 
So I could sell that, but it'd be a bit cheeky because it's my mission <laughs> thing. But if I wanted to, um, I don't know, sell this ion battery, I could just do that. And you can switch between here your exosuit inventory, your starship inventory um, as well. So I have different things in there. I have a fusion core, which is worth 150,000. I have no idea what I need it for, so I'm just keeping it. <laughs> um, the other things you have here, you see this thing here. This is very, very useful. So you can visit different galaxies. Um, I'm not sure if I can bring it up here. Um, I can't, but you can visit different galaxies. I'll show you how to do that in a minute. To do that, you need warp fuel. You learn how to make warp fuel in the tutorial, so don't worry too much about it. But um, every time you want to, or you can make warp cells, sorry, every time you want to warp, you have to make one. And I wouldn't say it's massively expensive, but it's annoying enough that you don't want to have to do it every single time. So the great thing is it has this transporter, which allows you to um, transport to any space station or a base where you have built one of these. Um, wherever you want cost free and it takes your ship with you so if i went to the, the bikini bikinio station tower um i would appear at, the, at that transporter with my ship so saves you a lot of time and money but every time you want to go to a new galaxy you will have to make a new warp cell as i said the tutorial will take you through that um you will probably need to um it's a, as I said, it's a little bit long. Uh, the tutorial, um, but stick with it because you'll know kind of when you're done with it because they'll turn around and say, um, "Oh hey, uh, we'll just go back to this planet now." They'll be like, "Oh hey, uh, do you want to carry on on this path or explore freely?" And that basic saying, "Do you want to carry on with the um, the?" Uh, missions of the game or do you want to just go off do your own thing and we won't bother you for a bit and like obviously it's up to you what you want to do from there but that kind of signals the end of the tutorial I would say you kind of know when you're there so this is a trading post that guy told me about just here um, this is obviously a different planet to the one we're on but I just wanted to show you deposits so there's one just here um, so let's just land up here there we go the ship flying is much better in No Man's Sky Next. Um, they worked on it a lot. It was a little bit janky before, um, but it is better now. Resources. You'll definitely need a lot of copper uh, when you kind of are starting out. It's kind of a, an important thing. The only way you can get copper, you can't mine it like that. The only way you can get it is with a terrain um, manipulator. Uh, which allows you to basically <laughs> destroy the terrain and steal it. The way you get a terrain manipulator is how I showed you at the space station. Go there, buy it. That's what I did. I don't know if there is a way it gives it to you, but I didn't find that at all. I just literally went there and brought the blueprint for it and then built it. So, yeah, because I knew I would need it kind of straight out. And then it uses a lot of fuel, but it uses ferrite dust as fuel. Well, he uses variations of ferrite dust as fuel and this is one of the big differences I am um, with this version of No Man's Sky that I've noticed um, as opposed to um, the previous ones is now there is a way to transform your materials into better ones um, think of it as kind of in Minecraft where you might find a, an iron block or sorry like an iron ore and then you transform it into an iron ingot. Um, okay, we've got quite a lot of copper there. And um, the way you do that, turns out I didn't have as much sodium there as I thought. There we go. The way you do that is by using, um, is by pressing Z or whatever the equivalent is on console. And then you get these options up. These You have all of these options to begin with so you have a save point which just allows you to save the game you have a portable refiner which is the thing we want I actually have to kind of make it so I forgot I left it on that other planet so we'll just do that so I can show you they're not very expensive um, what is this big boy 
Look at him. <laughs> there we go. Uh, so, yeah, I haven't got the uh, upgrade in my scanner yet on this save game, but um, I would have got a lot more money <laughs> if I did. Um, with the upgrades, the yellow ones are the best you can get, and then I think it's a kind of burgundy is the second best, and I probably wouldn't waste your time with the other ones, to be completely honest. Um, so yeah, you would use this. You need some fuel for it, which is a carbon-based product. I only got six carbon left. And then you can put something like copper in it, and it will change it into a different thing. So, uh, yeah. If I put in... Um, where are we? If I, if I just had some sodium, like I got from the plants, I could make sodium nitrate. The reason why I might want to do that, and you can pick this up at any time, by the way, take it with you. Um, the reason why I might want to do that is because sodium nitrate has um, a better, uh, what would be the word? When I'm refueling something, it uses less of sodium nitrate than it would sodium, even if I'm getting maybe a two for one on the conversion rate so in other words for every two sodium when i refine it i'm going to get one sodium nitrate but that one sodium nitrate would go a lot further than two sodium so it can be a good idea but then of course you are using carbon as well so it's kind of swings around about as well on what you want to do it doesn't really matter too much you're kind of as long as you've got the stuff that's important now this little fellow who's flying around here is a sentinel there are different types of sentinel. This is the most basic and common one you will get. What sentinels do is they look after the planet, the plants, and the animals. So if I start to try and mine this plant, he comes over and sees me, see? And he's got this little um, exclamation mark. If I continue to mine it, he will start to attack me. Um, and he will get annoyed, and he will start to attack me, and he'll start calling his friends in. His friends consist of a, a vaguely dog-looking like one, and a kind of upright walker type one, like the chicken walkers in Star Wars, but a bit smaller. With that, he walks inside. But, um, or R2 units, as is the case with the uh, newer ones. But um, there you go, you can see some oxygen up there. Glows red. Um, yeah, different planets the sentinels will act in different ways sometimes they will be straight out aggressive and they will try and kill you on sight sometimes they will uh, be very relaxed they if one sees you um continuing to uh how far away are we from here okay we'll go to this um if one sees you mining something then it will still attack you but you might not see as many of them as you would do normally. Um, but as I said, on some planets they will be very aggressive. When you land on a new planet, it will tell you about the Sentinels and what they're like. But you'll probably work it out pretty quickly if they're aggressive. Um, again, if they are aggressive, it's generally because there's something worth having on the planet. Usually something like Gravitino balls, something like that, which are worth quite a lot if you can get them. But you have to kind of do a, do a hit and run, you know? Like, grab the grab the stuff you want and then leg it back in your ship and fly off um, I believe some will chase you into space I haven't had that yet but I know that did used to be a thing and I would imagine it still to be a thing let's land here and have a look at this ship so different things can be found sometimes you can find a crash ship and you might be like oh okay interesting what do you get from a crash ship well you can get the ship if you want um, this ship's not particularly nice looking, but it might be better than what I've got. As it turns out, it's not really. Um, the reason why it's not really better than my ship is because um, you see all these things here. These are all the broken bits on it. You only have to repair this stuff to get it flying. You have to repair your pulse, your launch, and your deflector shield to get it flying. Um, this stuff you don't have to repair, but it will decrease the value and obviously won't allow you to use those slots. So... If you find a crash ship and you really, really like it, you can um, use resources to, um, if I just show you again, you can use those resources, you can use resources to essentially clear that away and you get another, you get a, a slot there. It's expensive though, it's really expensive, like 250 platinum is, is quite tough, you know, 500 chromatic metal, 
um yeah there's a thousand just for those two there it, but if you really like the ship or the ship was worth a lot of money it could be worth it if you happen to find one that is worth a lot of money it might be worth you just getting it repaired enough and then going to a space station because that's what i did to get this ship so i found a ship which was worth about uh 12 million and it crash landed but it had a lot of work needed on it i mean stuff it was advanced stuff as well which i hadn't even come across yet so i was like well there's not much i can do there oh so when i was talking about landing pads and a free launch when it goes green like that you can land on it and you get a free launch out of it like it won't cost you anything to launch there which is pretty good um but so as i was saying um, if we go back to this outpost actually this might be a quite clear um, for me to show you because that 12 million pound ship because it was um, kind of beaten up a bit and had the damage to it it was only worth around about 2 to 3 million um, which is still good because my ship at that time was worth about 300,000 it was a starting ship um, and so I was like, okay, well, I can just trade this in. So you can buy any ship you see in the game. That's the kind of really cool thing. You, there's not like a, a second-hand ship salesman or anything like that. You can literally buy any ship you see, probably barring the ones that are attacking you, but we'll go into that in a minute. Um, but hopefully some should land here, and I'll be able to show you. They usually land quite a lot, these trading posts. I think there's one coming in here. We can see him coming into land. Here he comes. So my ship's over there. I can't remember how much my ship's worth now. Uh, doesn't quite tell me that. So he's going to come in land here. And there you go. And then I go up to it. Oh, Danny. It's got a cool name actually. Pillar of Fire. Uh, so I can trade with him, I can buy and sell stuff, or I can make an offer for his ship. And then, see, it's got 27 slots. It has different things which are important to note. So, I said before, like, the more slots it's got, the better. It's not necessarily always true. It depends what you want the ship for. If you are going to go out and do bounty hunting, want to shoot things, obviously damage potential, shield absorb are important. You can raise those by adding in new technology. But maneuverability is the one which you really want to take a look at because um, if we compare our two here, uh, I can't really see here. But anyway, this one's worth 6.2 million. Mine's worth um, 1 million uh, with 18 slots. My damage is way higher. My shield's um, not as good as his. His is a bit better. Uh, and my hyperdrive's uh, a little bit worse as well. In other words, I can't go quite as far and but i prefer the maneuverability of my kind of fighter style there's different styles of ships if you press f over it this actually tells you the information you need to know it tells you how many slots it's got how many technology slots and how much it's worth and the class so it's a hauler it's a c with 27 slots plus two technology units and it's worth 6.2 million um haulers are as the name would suggest very good if you want to do a lot of trading um they are not good in a fight because they're not very maneuverable. Maneuverability is key. Mine's a fighter, it's worth 1.43. Uh, it's got 18 slots with four technology slots. If I show you the technology slots, you have, it's kind of not clearly laid out, but you have your general inventory slots and you have your technology slots. Technology slots is where you can put in things like extra weapons, extra drives, etc. However you like. Um, but you can also put them in the general inventory just to confuse things but you can't put things like this silver or gold or these items into your technology inventory so yeah it's a little bit confusing exosuits also got one it's also got a cargo one with a high capacity um and it's got your technology ones you can upgrade these on your exosuit as i said at the guy who's at the space station or you can sometimes find um little random drop pods around uh on planets which will allow you to do it, although they cost a lot in terms of materials um multi-tool just has the slots as it were 
Okay, let's get back in the ship because otherwise we, we might actually <laughs> be a bit low. A bit low on the old uh, life support there. Some of the ships look really cool. Um, as I said, that's an explorer class. You have a fighter, hauler, explorer, and shuttle class. Um, explorer allow, like usually has a better hyperdrive. It will go allow you to explore further. Fighter, which is the class I'm in now, is better maneuverability. It's better as a fighter, <laughs> as the name suggests. All is better at doing things. I think shuttles are like an all rounder, basically, um, from what I've seen. They had a four different classes, so you kind of pick a class you like. But as you kind of upgrade, you might just want to go for the one that's kind of worth more because when you trade it in for another ship, you can choose whether you want to trade it in. Or if you have the capacity, i.e. you have a freighter, you can choose to um, collect the ship. So you can have more than one ship, which is something I don't think you've been able to do in No Man's Sky before this update. Um, a freighter will come along fairly randomly. So what will happen is you will zoom into a system and you will see the freighters. I don't think there's any in this system for me to show you. Let me have a look. No, not offhand. You'll notice them because they'll be surrounded by a large fleet of ships and they'll kind of zoom in. Sometimes you get a distress signal saying they're under attack. If you respond to that stress, distress signal and you defeat the attackers, um, then you can board the freighter and the captain will basically turn around to you and go, hey, would you like my ship? It's yours. And you get a free freighter. Freighters generally cost about 18 million, so it's worth doing. Um, Every time I've done it, I've done it twice now um, on two different saves, there has been six attack ships to deal with and you don't necessarily take the full brunt of the um, six of them attacking you all at the same time, but it can be quite difficult, so it's worth bearing in mind. The key, number one key thing I would say to anyone is when you're just flying around normally, you will sometimes get randomly attacked. I'm kind of hoping I do get randomly attacked so I can just kind of show you it, but it is random, so it might not happen. But always, always, always have some sort of sodium-based product on you because that's what fuels your um, deflector shield, okay? Um, your deflector shield is what's stopping you from dying. <laughs> so you can essentially, if you're quick, you can just tab, you know, get it refilled, come back out, and you're back in the combat, and you've refilled your shield, okay? It's not cheating. It's how it's meant to be. Um, but, yeah, it's... It's really important to have sodium on you if you're going to do any sort of fighting. Let's go back here. We might get attacked uh, midway through. Um, yeah, it, the combat's not super difficult, um, I would say. It, it it takes a little bit of getting used to. Like, your ship will take a bit of getting used to and flying, but it's not difficult. Like, it's within your... It's not aimed at screwing you over, as in... Uh, okay, so say this guy here... Is in a fugitive attack ship. His bounty is 200,000. I'm not going to attack him, but I could do. It would give me 200,000 if I killed him. Um, and he's over there. He might be quite hard to do. Uh, I guess we'll do it. Sod it. Uh, but yeah, they, they start off. They can, they can Bounties vary from mostly harmless, which are 100,000, which I would say are really, really easy to do. I would recommend them. And it's, it's a good 100,000 that you can get. You just basically fly towards him. It will stay out of range until a point where it isn't, and then he will go, oh my god, someone's going to attack me. Yep, and then he will start attacking you. Uh, you have to kind of lead your shots, and you have to be aware of overheating as well. And you see my shield there just got hit. Just give it some sodium, or some sodium nitrate, and we're back full again. And then that little red arrow will show you where to go. Okay, he is quite difficult actually. Whoa. Good thing I've got a lot of sodium. Uh... I've got three different weapons on here. I can cycle through them using G, same with the multi-tool. Because they tend to overheat. Um, I actually want to try and get behind this guy because he's actually doing quite a lot of damage. And I don't have a, an ex like massive supply of sodium nitrate. Okay. Just to kind of like keep refueling and then... Okay, let's try and actually get behind him a little bit. Let's find out where he is. There he is. Right, this is our chance, I think. Sometimes I find just slowing down a little bit can help. And sometimes I don't. So, 
as you would imagine, for 200,000, the guy's, the guy's going to cream you a little bit, as he is now. So I was a bit hesitant to take him on. 300,000 ones, I would not recommend, unless you have a very, very good ship. I've tried one once, and I had to run away. You can always run away. Um, just hold down shift and but okay I need to run away because I'm actually out of sodium now <laughs> not taking my own advice you can't use the pulse engine but you generally will be faster than him so just head to the nearest planet once you get to a planet or space station and you get inside he'll stop attacking you anyway your ship will also um, oh there you go we're away anyway your ship will also refuel its shield as it goes along but it wasn't worth it for me because he had taken all my sodium. <laughs> I'd used all that up. As you get better ships, you get better technology, you know, you'll be able to survive better in, in fights and things like that. As I said the combat's not usually overly difficult, but if you choose to do the more difficult ones, then it can be quite a challenge. So bear that in mind. As you come up to a planet, you can see here it's got its name, it tells you how long you're going to arrive, it tells you what type of planet it is and what the elements are you're going to find on it. Um, that's quite important because sometimes you'll be looking for something specific and if it's not on that list then don't waste your time basically um, this is a flourishing planet which means it's obviously quite nice um, but bear in mind like the really really nice planets are actually quite hard to find so make sure that when you do you actually perhaps put down some roots as well so you, maybe you can come back to it and um, you know find it later and I've got my little kind of like starter base here so I thought this was a nice area one of the things you go through as well is a little bit on the base building in the tutorial um, the base building starts out quite basic and it can get pretty cool uh, later on um, you need to build and I showed you how to build the different things um, which is to the basic components here uh, that's sorry that's base building where's the the equipment there we go here we go yeah I showed you, you had the different things you can always build to begin with um, you would simply build one of the base computers it tells you to do this in the tutorial so don't worry too much you'll learn about it once you do you activate it and it kind of saves your area as a base these other items a blueprint analysis um, you use um, salvage technology to buy blueprints it can be a little bit annoying because finding salvage technology is not the easiest thing in the world you use your um, your uh, analysis visor and then you search and the icon for it is like it looks like a little Wi-Fi icon I don't think I've got any around here because I think I have found all the ones around here and I had to go off and search uh, for others but basically you go find it oh no there it is there's one okay let's go to that one because we're, we're there now um, it's 300 U's away which is perfectly able to kind of run towards it so when you're there you need to use your terrain manipulator which I've just realised is out of juice so just make sure we've got enough juice for that um, only a little bit though and you just basically dig with it and you'll find the uh, berry technology unit what's annoying about it is that you don't always get a technology unit from it sometimes you get like 30 nanites which you can get hundreds of hundreds of like a thousand nanites just from scanning everything on the planet like more than that even um and like with these you want the blueprints not the nanites because it gives you like 30 and 30 nanites is not very useful <laughs> trust me it doesn't go a long way um but as i said it doesn't always give you what you want just a little annoying okay just down here Um, and when you get close it'll say like distance reached and then there you go then you just I usually just aim at it and keep digging there we go very technology unit there okay gave me nanite clusters that sucks <laughs> I hate I hate it when I get nanite clusters from it. it's annoying because that's the only way that I know to get those right now and you know you want to get better things for your base and be able to make nicer things but it's a bit of a grind to actually find through them so I always recommend doing that on a planet where you are not getting hit by hazards because otherwise it's very difficult um, if you find that you can't see any on here just get in your ship 
there you go there's another one over there you can tag it by holding e what that means is once you come out of your scanner it is always on there for you so i can go back to that off camera try and get that but um yeah basically that's how you do that you get the blueprints and you buy them at the uh, blueprint analysis and then you build things in your base and the base building's pretty simple think of it something like fallout 4 for example where it's kind of like snap to um kind of like planks and things like that um i haven't done too much in the base building so it's not really a beginner's guide if i kind of go through that as much but you know the, the general gist of it you go through in the tutorial um, what can be useful is if you do find somewhere where you're like i really want this to be where my main base is you know i'm going to always come back to this area is you can build a well in the blueprint analysis you can unlock a kind of like think of it as like a star gate as i said uh, before those ones which we found at the space station um where are they okay it's not on there because i've already obviously found it um where is it it's under is it under equipment and then there we go yeah so you can build one of these here doesn't cost you too much to be fair ionized cobalt is just normal cobalt put through a refiner um, and an ion battery is pretty simple to make as well so you can unlock that once you do that you can go to any space station or anywhere there's another one of these basically that you've discovered so very very useful um, without a doubt and yeah the base building can be pretty pretty good to do as well so um well worth putting down some roots and things like that because you can do things like farming which can give you lots of like units for like planting rare plants and things like that and it's just cool to have your own kind of like home to be able to come back to um when you want so that's kind of the, the base building so the other things there were the refiner and then this thing which is a signal booster so if you access it sometimes you will find things called navigation data sometimes you will find things called drop pod coordinate data this takes you to a drop pod where you can upgrade your exosuit this takes allows you to choose what you want to find if i just click locate nearby structures it will um be a random structure somewhere if i input data so i use some of my navigation data i can choose what i want to do secure frequencies distress habitable or artifacts i'm going to go secure because this is another important thing that they don't tell you in the game which is how to pick up blueprints for things everything has a blueprint um, associated with it that you craft in the game so that's over there by the way we're going to go to it in a minute um, when you you need a free slot and you need to have the prerequisite items so okay I can build an atlas pass here don't worry about what that is right now i'm actually going to build it anyway because i do need one um but yeah everything here will tell you what it needs um to build and then you build it but you need to get the blueprints to be able to discover what it is if that makes sense um it's and with a lot of blueprints you can't just use nanites to go and buy them you have to actually discover them which can be you can, well sometimes they give them to you sometimes you discover them kind of varies a little bit how far away is this oh this is not far away at all and um, generally a pretty good way to discover them is at these kind of manufacturing facilities here so it, it's recommended you try and find as many of these as you can um, because this is a really good way to make money um, is to have blueprints okay let's pop it down there but this can be quite dangerous though that's worth pointing out okay so let's just save it over here these save points are well worth saving at whenever you can and activating it because you can actually sell um the data on that so if i go back to my discoveries uh you can see here i can upload these and get some free nanites here you go um how many nanites did i get is it going to tell me there you go 30. it's not bad for just finding stuff now inside these secure facilities you'll find a reinforced door as soon as i start shooting that door the sentinel is going to start attacking me so i've got to be pretty sure um that i'm ready for that um you're best off using your bolt caster or other weapon i don't think a mining beam even works actually let's have a look no it doesn't work it works a little bit but i think it's quite slow so let's use my bolt caster 
There we go. They see they're already triggered. They're going to come over and start shooting me in a minute. Yeah. So I'm going to try and get this door open because if you can get the door open and run inside, they won't be able to follow you. So even though I'm taking a bit of a hit now, get this door open. There we go. They can't follow me in. Or if they can't see me in here. I think one did happen to follow me in. And so when they're searching, that will run down and then eventually they will go away. It, I don't know if it's a bug or if they meant to do that. Anyway, once you're in here, um, something deep in complex manufacturing, surface feels hot, uh, bead of sweat rolls down the forehead, engage coolant, active fusion dampening field, initialize laser refraction. So it says something about high something. I've, I only know the word high so far. So I'm going to engage the cooling chamber. Danger indicates plummet. Facility spring to sell. I managed to do that and it gave me a new formula at Atlas Pass V3. So that's how you get product formulas which are very very important um, and um, because there is a way in which you can make a ton of money in this game without really having to do very much you just have to find the right formula for it um, I'll show you that what you need but if we go back to the space station um, it's kind of an exploit I guess and it's up to you if you want to do it if you do it it will kind of ruin the progress of the game a little bit for you but it's certainly not cheating it's not something I mean it's in the game so it's you know you, you do have to earn it as well so as I said you get things you can learn so I learned the Atlas Pass version 3 I haven't found anywhere with Emeril yet so I can't even make it but th the general gist of things is that you're crafting a product which is made out of you know not that expensive products and then it makes something which is slightly more expensive and that's one way you can make money if I show you something I think it'll show you at this space station um, but there is a product that you can find a blueprint for that sells for a ton of money I think it sells for like five million uh, units which as I said, my ship's only worth like two, so <laughs> it's quite a lot. Uh, and you can buy, generally buy the products for it. Okay, we're out of fuel. That's embarrassing. And I haven't got any trinium. Okay, I'm going to have to shoot some rocks. Luckily, there's always rocks. <laughs> I haven't even been to that planet yet. I really need to think about doing upgrades on my ship to kind of allow things to or make me slightly better at fighting because uh, I'm a bit I'm a bit rubbish at the minute have I got any try to yeah about 30 okay it's not going to get me that far so we might just have to get a bit more I seem to be getting more uh, silver than I am anything else okay so we're going to be in a battle because what that means when someone hostile scans you is they are, I haven't got any uh, mm, I haven't got any um, sodium actually so might have to just leg it see they will appear there they'll usually be holy crap there's a load of them okay we're going to try and just leg it away from them Normally I'd be fine taking five, but I haven't got any sodium right now, so just for the sake of this, and also I want to get to the space station, so for the sake of this, we're just going to leg it. And eventually they'll give up. It's good to attack them, I guess. You do get, you do find some rare cargo on them sometimes, and I guess just for pride's sake, <laughs> it's, it's worth it. There we go. We're away. But basically, don't worry about it, because you can always run away. The game doesn't like screw you over that much. Okay, so let's get to this space station. And then come into land. Okay.
So yeah, I think hopefully this guide has kind of maybe taught you some stuff which you didn't know, as I said, because there's a lot in this game it doesn't quite tell you, which can be a little frustrating, I think, for, for newer players. So, um, does this have what I'm looking for? No, it doesn't, which is very useful. Anyway, there's a certain product in there which sells for about 5 million. You can get a blueprint for it. The items you can also sometimes buy at Space Station for, like, less than a million. So you kind of, like, you can buy the items at a Space Station, make it for a million, and then sell it for 5 million straight away. So you can see how you can kind of work that. When you sell more items, the price of it does go down. So you can't it won't continuously be worth 5 million but you can just go to another space station and just do, do the same again until you find it and like people are saying you can make like 10 million in 10 minutes easy I think you can possibly even do more than that 100 million probably um, but again it's up to you because um, you will kind of be ruining the game if that makes sense a little bit for yourself because um, you know, kind of the whole idea of this game is to steadily upgrade, is to kind of earn your way up, not to just kind of like find something and then boom, you have everything because you are kind of ruining the game. There's not like, oh, I want to get to the end game content. It's like the game is about the journey, not the destination, if that makes sense. So bear that in mind. But, you know, some people might find it useful if they want to get that kind of dream ship or whatever, or maybe they want to buy materials for their base or something like that. But it's up to you anyway. You can look it up on YouTube anyway. Um, yeah, so um, so eventually you can get like um, you know the blueprints for all these types of things, which which sell for quite a lot, and then you can make them yourself and sell them. Do well out of that. Um, yeah, so I guess I'll probably finish up here. I think I've gone through kind of just about how to. Um, do and like the little kind of basics of it and stuff like that as i said sodium is really important carbon is very important to have oxygen is very important to have um you know always kind of like try and get as much of that stuff as you can um because you go through it especially if you're playing survival mode and um yeah kind of search for those blueprints on a nice planet if you can and don't forget to you know upload your stuff to get those nanites because that is kind of a key component of the game is getting those nanites to um, be able to upgrade your stuff um, if only that button did all of them you do have to select them individually unfortunately if you do find like every species on the planet you do get a big reward so that is also worth doing as well I, I'm a bit too lazy to do that though I must admit um, this will also tell you what you're standing in. So you can see with the Gek, I'm a best friend with them. They really like me. You have the Viking and the Corvax. And you also have guilds as well, um, which you can do. And they'll tell you about them. Log if you want to. Um, kind of, uh, you know, work out where you're going. There's primary missions. And then there's your secondary missions as well, which you can get as well. And the guide is really useful as well. So, yeah, just basically if that kind of hopefully kind of helps you out, because as I said, the game doesn't quite tell you a lot of that stuff and you kind of work it out yourself. Um, but, yeah, the other, the last thing is um, traveling around on a planet can take quite a while. And a good tip is I think it's a kind of a bug, but you can kind of use it. So um, I actually have to show you down on the planet, funnily enough, because it won't let me do anything here but I'll show you anyway so it's a tip I learned off of I can't remember which let's go to this new planet that I hadn't discovered yet um, I think it was Eurogamer I watched a kind of like top 10 tips on it. it did teach me a few things sometimes those things are like proper clickbait and they tell you exactly what you know in the game sometimes they're actually really good oh this is an airless planet. I actually had a mission tonight to um, take a picture on an airless planet, so that's useful, I guess. An airless planet will mean that I use up a lot more life support a lot quicker, but we're only kind of visiting here, so it's not the end of the world. Um, one of the great things in um, No Man's Sky is just the views are breathtaking. The, sometimes when you look at things a bit close up they can look a little bit janky even on pc like this is at 2k with everything turned up full um 
you know textures can look a little bit off close up but when you look at the game as a whole you know it it's just stunning you know the scope and breadth of it is really good now it actually has features which help back that up as well which is good okay this is a very barren planet isn't it so um when you're running along if you press q it does a melee attack so you can melee things if you if you're running along you press q and then you press the jetpack which is space you see there it, just kill myself because it, it took me so far but basically because there's no air on this planet i i tend to go a lot further now it should have just saved it when i came out of the uh thing or i can restore it to a save point anyway so it doesn't matter too much but because when you die by the way you lose everything in your inventory so uh yeah you lose everything in your general inventory but anyway because it's low atmosphere yeah my jetpack works a lot better on this planet which i actually completely forgot about but um yeah you can do it so you can gradually like go down but yeah if you do that you do tend to go quite a lot further than if you're just say running you can run in the meantime to your jetpack refuels and then we're gonna die again but anyway i'll probably just uh the manual save <laughs> so i get my stuff back so that's a kind of important thing it does auto save every time you get in and out your vehicle but you can these manual saves you do at the save points um they you can reload them as well so if something like that does happen as long as you have a manual save kind of fairly nearby you know i didn't really lose any time i'll just have to go back in there get another blueprint it is always the same blueprint by the way you can't just cheese it by reloading um but i'll have to do that again but um at least I will have everything in my general inventory because <laughs> that's quite a bad way to go. Otherwise, I completely forgot. So, yeah, just the way it looks on a normal planet is like that, basically. So you, you don't die from the, the drop. That was just a kind of super planet. So it's a good way to get about. Kind of reminds me a little bit of Warframe um, in that way. Like there are certain like combina key combinations to get about with in Warframe. Uh, yeah and if you get like um upgrades your jetpack which makes it go further you can obviously go much much further uh, as well but if you're if you, usually if you're running and then do it that's when you get a really good boost from it and then you can just run again allows you to traverse quite quickly across the terrain um i think that's just about it actually for this kind of like i guess little beginners hints and tips um to no man's skies if you've got any questions just kind of ask because um i'm always kind of happy to try and help out um and thank you so much for watching until then see you soon Bye bye